let's start off right and begin from one of the very first gameplay footage we got from Techland. There isn't much to go off of in this gameplay footage. There is just a couple parkour moves, but they look a lot more realistic compared to what we have now. Moving chandeliers is still in the game and they are really cool and fun to do parkour on. Unfortunately, it didn't collapse when I did parkour or threw a zombie on it. Here we can see the wall jump move that's still in the game obviously. It looks a lot more realistic back then. And in the more recent builds, it's a lot more smoother. I also realized that back then, when you did this move, it would take up some stamina. It doesn't take up anymore now, but I hope they can add this as a feature in harder difficulties. Sadly, I couldn't find any situation that gave me this opportunity. I don't know if it's still in the game or if it got removed. The parkour also doesn't seem so floaty. Just like the knife slide, I also didn't find an opportunity or any of these around. Okay, the parkour seems a little floaty here. Also here too. There aren't any bars to swing when climbing the water tower, but there are actually bars to swing off of in interiors, mostly in central loop. I never had this opportunity. Dying Light 2's 2019 gameplay has a lot more parkour to go off of when it's compared to the 2018 showcase. In a way, the movement and fluidity is that a word, of the 2019 gameplay demo is similar to the influence it built at the event. Just some things are more polished, but you know, it isn't completely identical, which is a good thing. In the more recent builds, there also seems to be two types of vaulting, one for when you're stationary and another one for when you have momentum. Sadly, I didn't discover any of these during my playthrough. A thing to take note here is that there seems to be a lot of hand-holding when making these precise jumps. I can proudly say that this isn't a feature in the game anymore. And if it is, well, it isn't as noticeable. I also didn't find any cracks to go through in buildings, but I highly doubt they'll get rid of this feature. The animation for this skill is different, obviously, and a lot more snappy in my recent builds, which is just weird and kills the immersion for me, but that's just my opinion. The far jump seems to work in two ways. You got your normal standard one, and one where you magnetize to a ledge. I want to point out that the swing Aiden does on the bars is a special one. There are two types of swings you can do off bars. You have one swing for vertical movement, and then the one Aiden does is for a faster keep the momentum type movement. I also never encountered something like this. The combo wall run is still a thing, just a little more polished. These are still in the game and once you use them, you can actually circle back and use it again. In my playthrough though, they only fall one way. Aiden uses the dash skill here, which still looks and functions the same. Also never had this happen. I don't know if this is still a feature. Never heard or had it happen.
There is a parkour skill that lets you get a little boost to go higher when doing a wall run. It's a quick time prompt. Also haven't had this happen to me. Sliding down slopes is still a thing, but it's ridiculously slow. Letting go of a ledge is still a thing. I did it twice off the same height and both times Aiden pulled himself up. I did it again somewhere else and he ended up letting go. The animation is still similar, just a lot more polished. I never got a prompt or something to do this, and that's pretty much it for the 2019 parkour gameplay. I wasn't able to unlock jump pads because I didn't make it that far, but from the word of Ozzy, he said that it really brings out the floatiness. Aiden uses a skill here that gives him a boost when sliding, which is exactly why he looks so fast when recovering. And just like the wall run skill, it also comes up as a quick time prompt. It's essential out there. We improve it. We double the number of puck removes. The players will see over 3,000. I really, really, really hope you can go down this tube. Techland actually made it a thing, and it's just as amazing as I thought it'd be. Faster. I have no idea what type of jumps these are. I asked Sherry, but I haven't heard anything back. They may or may not be a special jump tailored to a skill. We can hear the music wrap up with Aiden's parkour flow, and words cannot describe how good it feels when you actually experience it in game. And yes, there are different parkour flow music, it isn't just one. The alternate routes you can find inside buildings are actually quite amazing and each have something unique, like boys you could swing off or poles to slide down. I love how the game requires you to use your parkour movement to solve puzzles. Aiden slides sideways, which means there's backsliding in DL2. That was mostly all I have to show for the parkour gameplay. So, the conclusion. They seem to have started with a very realistic approach to the parkour. For whatever reason, maybe it was too difficult or too annoying, it just didn't work out. Then they had a kind of arcade tone where everything wasn't looking very realistic and was just not that good looking. They seem to have noticed that it wasn't what they were going for and have finally decided to settle upon a middle ground between being too realistic and too cartoony. Dying Light 1 kind of went through the same thing with the whole Antoine and Ken situation and honestly it just wouldn't be a Dying Light game if it wasn't like that. 
Obviously, they will give us accessibility for the HUD and everything so you can kind of play the game however you want. But the point koi, mostly, and keyword, mostly, just the animations have changed. They're not really removing any point koi moves, which is not bad because they're not gonna pull a full 180 on us. Mostly what they're doing is just expanding on what they already have, which is honestly great. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video because who knows, you might enjoy all of my other Dying Light content and more in the future to come. Big thank you to Oni for giving me the opportunity to be in this big collab project. It's honestly amazing. I can't wait to see what the others have came up with and I hope you guys enjoy this major project we did.